The number of confirmed COVID-19 cases has surged exponentially, with steep increase in European countries and the United States. With an influx of returning overseas students and travelers, and the relaxation in preventive measures by some citizens, Hong Kong has also a marked increase in daily confirmed cases after the 18th of March. Most cases could be traced to outbreak groups and premises. The government is still trying to contain the epidemic by active tracing, treatment by isolation of the infected and suspected, and quarantining the asymptomatic contacts. The capacity at the hospital authority will get tighter as it has only around 1,300 isolation beds in 600 isolation rooms, which are divided according to gender, adult or pediatric, or whether they are in ventilated cases or require intensive care. If the number of confirmed cases continue to rise, there might be a need to expand the accommodation of the infected or suspected cases. The risk of community spread is higher now compared with February and early March. There is increasing evidence to show that some people might have subclinical infection and can be infectious without them knowing. For those with symptoms and confirmed infection, they can be infectious a few days before the appearance of symptoms and continue to be infectious for a period after the symptoms subside. This adds to the higher risk of community transmission. The cases in Hong Kong will rise if we do not observe self-protection and exercise distancing in social and work environment. For families with members returning from overseas and under quarantine, distancing among family members is also necessary. While coronavirus vaccines are now undergoing development and tests, research in various countries has shown the genetic attenuation of the virus has occurred through generations of transmission. There are likely to be different strains of COVID-19 bearing different characteristics. One possible outcome will be the difficulty of developing an effective vaccine with such frequent genetic evolution. I would like to remind you of two don'ts and two do's. For don'ts, number one, do not neglect. Don't be overconfident and take self-protection measures lightly. Second, do not panic. Overreacting makes you stressed and does not do any good in fighting the coronavirus. For do's, number one, do take care of yourself. Practice distancing whenever possible. Wear a mask when going out, wash your hands frequently, keep your home and work environment clean and hygienic. And number two, do look after and help each other. We must work together to contain the pandemic and lighten the burden of our healthcare workers so that they can concentrate to help those in need.